Hello. In this video, I'm going to uh, talk about alpha halogenation of carbonyl compounds, and I'm going to focus on this reaction in base. In the previous video, I shared that uh, you could aldehydes and ketones could undergo alpha halogenation in acids. So this time, we're going to talk about the base version. I'm going to use bromine. Uh, this also happens to work with uh, chlorine and iodine. You know, sometimes iodine is troublesome. Right. <clears throat> and like the acidic version, you end up with a halogen at a neighboring, you know, end up with halogen at the alpha position. Uh, let's just quickly go through the mechanism. Oops. Uh, this mechanism starts by uh, you know, deprotonating the alpha hydrogen to make the enolate, and then that reacts with. reacts with then that will react with bromine as an electrophile and then otherwise this mechanism is pretty straightforward enolate bromine as an electrophile enolate is nucleophilic at carbon I shared in the previous video on the acidic version, this is not a whole lot different from the reaction of any alkene with uh, bromine or one of the other halogens, except that you know it's an enolate, <coughs> so the, the product looks a little bit different. There is a consideration, there is a concern with this variation, and that is overhalogenation. So if we look at our initial reaction here, we have a, a, a bit of trouble in that the product is more acidic since bromine is electron withdrawing. That means uh, it is very difficult to avoid overhalogenation. And if overhalogenation is going to occur, it's going to occur on the same position. Uh, so it's more likely that the second bromine ends up in the same carbon as the first bromine. And even, and it's, there's still other places, and so it's even possible to continue to get further halogenation here. <clears throat> Another consideration that I want to talk about is, um, you know, let's look at the regiochemical outcome. Regiochemically, we are going to end up with the bromine on the more substituted position. And this is the same thing that happens in acid. Since sodium hydroxide is a weak base in compar you know, in comparison to the enolate anyway, weaker base favors the thermodynamic enolate. And then we're so thermodynamic enolate is the more substituted enolate. This is the one that's going to generate the product. However, if there's excess sodium hydroxide and excess bromine, this reaction is going to continue to, to produce more and more bromines. In fact, that may suggest a remedy to the, the overhalogenation process. Okay. Move my more thermodynamic enolate over here so I can have some space. Okay. Right. So one way to possibly avoid uh, overhalogenation and also to give us regio control is to use a stronger base 
well, what might this look like? So instead of using sodium hydroxide and bromine together, if you use lithium diisopropyl amide, which tends to prefer the kinetic enolate, and you only use one equivalent of it, then you're going to get almost exclusively kinetic enolate. And there's not going to be any more base left. So after the bromination step, you're not going to get any further deprotonation. And last, I want to talk about something called the halo form reaction. And I've been saving my uh, iodine for this. Though iodine and chlorine work in this reaction the same way uh, that bromine do, does, and bromine and chlorine, all of the halogens behave well here, except, of course, for chlorine. Something different happens here. Let's talk about it. halo form reaction. So this product that I have drawn over here, CHI3 is iodoform, like CHCl3 is chloroform. CHBr3 would be bromoform. When you have a methyl ketone, so there's a methyl group on one side of the ketone, even if other places look more acidic, you're eventually going to get nucleophilic. You're eventually going to get substitution here. And now that position, whoops, is more acidic. So we're going to get another one, not indium. Okay. And then we're going to get another one. I'm going to go ahead and. and abbreviate this CI3. Well, it looks like chlorine 3, doesn't it? Move my... There we go. Well, this CI3, it makes the... is really strong electron withdrawing. We, we use these things as uh, moderate to strong deactivators in electrophilic aromatic substitution. So it activates this thing for nucleophilic attack. And the nucleophilic attack part was probably already going on anyway. Except now we have this other interesting thing that can happen. The CI3 group can come off as a leaving group. I need some space because this is going to wander into my head. Excuse me a moment. Raise this up. And come off as a leaving group. I have a carboxylic acid and I have carbon. I Iodine. This carbanion, three iodines around it. So it's a reasonably good leaving group in that it's, you know, it's got some inductive stabilization from the halogens, but it's still a pretty strong base. Deprotonates. The carboxylic acid, and then you get the, the iodoform reagent. So this is a pretty decent synthesis of iodoform, and because iodoform is a insoluble, mostly uh, mostly insoluble and yellow, uh, it provides a nice visual test for the existence of methyl ketones. Uh, but I can't promise that other halogenated products aren't also going to form, so I don't know how synthetically useful this is. Uh, but it, it's it's a, a known complication. So. If the only thing that you get out of this video is that the 
alpha halogenation in base is harder to control uh, and therefore can have undesired consequences, then I think you're in pretty good shape. This concludes my video series on alpha alkylation and halogenation. Thank you for watching.